Welcome to Tailgate Talks. Where's Jim? Jim? Well, Tyson, don't you know? If you just say Jim McDermott three times, he just magically appears. Jim's like Beetlejuice? <laughs> yeah. Jim McDermott, Jim McDermott, Jim McDermott. Magic. Jim's here. I told you. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. I don't know where you're at before we got here, but uh, we're glad you're here now. I'm not sure where I was at either, but I'm glad I'm here too. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Jim, thanks for showing up today. No, I summoned you from the somewhere, wherever you were. Uh, but hey, we've had a wet spell for quite some time now, mm-hmm. a couple weeks. And um, some people might be getting antsy on changing hybrids from their full season, maybe to mid season. What do you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely a good question. You know, we we want wanted the rain, hate to turn down moisture, but now we've gotten too much of a good thing. Um, really when we're talking about corn hybrid maturity changing, um, a lot of factors that go into play, and of course, everybody's situation is different depending on the, the dryer setup and, and, of course, the end use of that crop. But uh, generally speaking, May 20th is a date that we look at uh, starting to change. And, and when we say start to change, we also mean uh, change gradually. So if you're planning on a 115 day hybrid, you don't necessarily jump down to a 100 day hybrid, you jump more in like a five day increment. Uh, so that's something to, that you really want to keep in mind. Um, but we want to keep those full season products in the mix as long as possible, uh, not only to maximize yield, but we want to make sure that we are also maintaining stress tolerance and maintaining standability. Because those are going to be a couple of important factors as we get uh, later into the season, Eric. Yeah. And uh, so we've had enough GDUs out there for corn to pop up, right? I mean, I don't see very much popping up, but there's quite a bit up. Is there a reason why we're not seeing all this corn popping up yet? Yeah, and I'm kind of the same way. Um, I have seen some corn up, but uh, based on the GDUs and the planting date, we should see more. Uh, But I think a few factors. Uh, GDUs are never perfect, especially on an emerging seed. Once we're using the GDU measurements uh, in season for some of the reproductive stages, I think it's a little more accurate. Uh, But the corn plant isn't able to utilize all those GDUs, especially if, if, say, we get to 70 for an hour during the day versus 10 hours during the day. That's obviously a lot of difference on that developing seed below ground. And then our nighttime lows make a difference. We've had some cooler nighttime lows below 50, and I I think that slowed the process down. And then really the other factor, Eric, is so we have had saturated soils. And once we saturate that soil, we don't have oxygen to the seed. So those metabolic processes just slow down or stop. So that, that slows down the whole germination process. Uh, most of the seed I've looked at below ground is, is in good shape. Obviously, we've got some wet holes. We've got some spots we're going to need to replant. Uh, but we just are going to have to be patient to get this corn up out of the ground and be able to evaluate it for stand. So we've had some saturated soils. Are you worried about any soybean crusting or anything like that? Is it preventing the soybeans from popping up? Yeah, yeah, there has been some crusting uh, with the hard rains, of course. Um, and... and uh, now, soybeans are, are, are a challenge, and we, we saw some of that last year, too, um, especially if you're not in 30-inch rows. 30-inch rows tend to have a little better chance to push, but uh, have to give them a little more time. Um, you know, sometimes uh, soybeans can have uh, uneven emergence or staggered emergence, and you really don't affect yield. So I think that's what's going to help us out as far as the, the soybean stands go. Right. Well, patience is key, uh, both on corn and soybeans, just to be able to see what we have up and, and evaluate the stand and then make our decisions from there. Well, hey, Jim, thanks for coming in today. Um, I know I just said your name three times. You guys try that at home, see if he actually pops up at your house. You never know. <laughs> Might be a little scary. <laughs> thanks for joining us and uh, have a good week. <laughs>